It's certainly a privilege and a pleasure to greet you this morning again on behalf of that name that is above every other name, the name Jesus Christ himself. So, hello and welcome to you wherever you're listening from. Thank you for taking this time off to share with us God's precious word. There was a serious conversation that was happening between a barber and his client. Uh, although the conversation was one-sided, uh, the barber was very vocal in trying to get his message across. The customer so happened to be a priest, uh, recognized by the outfit that he was wearing. Taking the opportunity to confront the priest and tell him about the goings in the world, uh, the barber says, if there was a God, we would not have so much of hardship in the world. If there was a God that existed, we would not have the spate of killings and rape and, 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 uh, and so on in this world. So my firm belief, as the barber said, is there is no God. The priest in the hands of the barber with a very sharp razor that was trimming the beard and cutting his hair, did not want to say something that would possibly offend the barber and causing a little slip on the blade. He was very quiet, taking in the conversation and assessing and listening to what the barber was saying. The barber had finished his task at hand. He did a beautiful job, by the way. The priest paid him and thanked him for the service rendered and was stepping out of the barber shop. As he got out the door and he opened the door and across the road on the pavement on the other side, he noticed a beggar with very long hair, very long beard, very unkempt and very untidy. He turns around and he looks at the barber and he says, well, barbers do not exist. He says, if barbers existed and pointing to the man across the road, he says, uh, you would not find a man with so long hair. You would not find a beggar with such untidy beard. So I am of this opinion uh, that barbers do not exist. The barber looks at him and says, well, I've just done your hair. Just look at the spate of customers that are waiting to have their hair done. Yeah, I am. The problem with that man is uh, he does not come to the barber. And jesting in his spirit, uh, the priest looked at the barber and said, Well, that's what happens to people in the world. They do not go to God. John's Gospel, chapter 10 and verse 10 would record, and allow me to read the, the, the New Life Translation. Uh, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Uh, Jesus, in, in John writing in this particular passion, a, a portion of scripture says uh, uh, that the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But my purpose was to give them eternal life. Uh, for those that wanted the eternal life that would come to me and they would uh, be recipients of this life that I have to offer. When Jesus was around, the Bible is recorded with full of stories that people thronged and they wanted to get to him. And this was the problem or, or, or the reason why the, the, the Pharisees did not like, li, like it. Because them being zealots and being, being religious leaders, pe people didn't clamor to them, but they just followed Jesus. And Jesus pointed out in no uncertain terms, the reason for this is because you people are taking advantage of those people. The sheep that are coming are just straddling around. They're running away. Nobody has any care or concern for them. They are just trying to plunder and, and, and pillage this shepherd society. They have absolutely no, no qualms about the spiritual being. As long as they can earn something materialistically, they are not worried really about the, about the sheep. But Jesus had a different view. When he came, he came with such compassion. When he came, he came with such love. When he saw this, it grieved his heart. And that's why he, he prompted to say what he said in John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 10. There are two versions of people that are trying to get your attention today in this current society. The Bible warns about the roaring lion that's going about to devour those that would fall prey un under him. The Bible also further warns uh, that the wolf comes in sheep's clothing. Uh, he will deceive you to try to make his own. Uh, then the Bible talks about Jesus coming that you could have this full and satisfying life. Uh, there's a couple things, the differences, very notable that I want to point out this morning to us. Uh, firstly, Jesus has come. 
to cleanse us. Romans will tell us that every one of us, irrespective of our color, irrespective of our creed, irrespective of our stature, irrespective of our age, irrespective of our intelligence, the Bible tells us that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The punishment for this sin was death. The punishment for this sin, the payment that you need to do was death. But Jesus has come so that he could claim you as your own. The Bible tells that is why he went on the cross. So you did not have to pay for the sins that you have committed. He took it upon himself. He claimed you as your own. And the Bible alludes to this, that we are heirs and joint heirs of the Father. Every bountiful blessings that come from heaven above is destined for you if you are claimed by his son Jesus. He's come to cleanse you on the cross. When he hung on the cross there, did he not scream, it is finished, it is finished, meaning I have paid the debt that belonged to society. I have paid the debt once and for all for everyone that has will commit any sin. He's come, Jesus has come to cleanse you. Jesus has come to claim you and he's coming back for you. But on the other hand, the Bible talks about this devil that's going as a roaring lion. He's got two motives, my friend. He's come to call you. He's come to deceive you. He's come to make life look so rosy. But the, the path that you choose is going to go to an untimely, definite death. His motive started in the Garden of Eden. The Bible will tell us when, when God made this beautiful garden for, for Adam and Eve and, and he told them just one thing, do not eat of that particular tree, the tree of, uh, of knowledge and good and evil. What does the devil do? He calls this couple and he tells them that, he will, they, that they will become like God and, and, and all the good things that they were taught against and yet he deceived them and you and I know what happened. They were banished from paradise to live into the sinful world. He corns you with, with making things that's, that's unrealistic, that seems very nice and rosy to you. And then he comes and he condemns you, my friend. He's got no place for you for eternity. The end, end result for whatever you do when you follow him is death. And that's it, my friend. There is a notable phrase that I've heard or read some time ago when it goes like this. The devil knows your name, but he calls you by your shame. But Jesus knows your shame, but he calls you by your name. John 10.10 10 ratifies this so beautifully. The devil has come that he could seek to kill you, destroy you, to con you and to condemn you. But Jesus on the other hand says, I have come to give you a satisfying life. I have come to cleanse you. I have come to claim you and I'm coming back for you. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Today we beseech you to search your heart and see who you're serving. You can only serve one master today, the Bible says. You can either choose to serve God or follow the path that will ultimately lead you to death that the devil has to offer. The devil has two motives, to con you and to condemn you. But Jesus wants to give you life and to the fullest. Assess your situation right now and try to see which path you are headed right now. Are you being conned and condemned? Are you being called out by your shame today? But Jesus wants to call you by your name. Say, son, daughter, I have a life, a very satisfying life for you, if only you would come to me. The Bible says, come unto me, all you that are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Are you looking for that rest today? Only Jesus can give that to you today. Shall we pray? Perhaps you don't know who Jesus is this morning. And if having listened to this short message, you're wondering, uh, who is this Jesus really? What is come that you could have life and have it more abundantly? The Bible tells us that he left heaven to come to pay for your sin. 
He's come as your substitute. Whatever your indiscretions, whatever your transgressions, whatever your sin might be, uh, if only you ask him to take it away, to forgive your fate, he's more than willing to do that. Uh, Revelations Gospel, the third chapter, verse 20, would record it like this, and I paraphrase. Uh, Behold, I stand at your heart's door and knock. Uh, if you would only listen to the knock uh, and open the door, I will come in and I will make your heart my home. Uh, I will forgive you of your transgressions. I will forgive you of your misdemeanors. I will forgive you of your transgressions and I will cleanse you anew. And I will claim you as my child this morning. If that's you today saying that I don't know who Jesus is, that perhaps you won't accept Jesus. All you need to do is ask him to come into your heart today. A very simple prayer. And perhaps you can follow me as I would lead you this morning. Dear Lord Jesus, Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I recognize that I have messed up, Lord. And today I am asking you to forgive me of my sins, to cleanse me and to claim me as your own. I know, Lord, that you died on the cross and that you're coming back for me. So won't you forgive me and make me your child? In Jesus' name, amen. Father, today we want to bring those that might have said this prayer and for those that are having a tough time today, Lord, just like the beggar, Lord, uh, standing and do not know what to do. Uh, circumstances have put him in a place, Lord, uh, and he cannot get cleansed today. But Father, you are willing to clean and to cleanse those that are willing to come to you today. We ask that you would touch them, Lord, forgive them, and that you would make them as your child. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. We thank you for taking time to listen to us this morning. And we trust that this message would bring Comfort to your hearts, joy to your souls, uh, and it would bring healing to your bodies. So wherever you might be listening from, we thank you for taking this time out. God bless you and God keep you safe.